Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Unit 1, um, Lesson 1 in the Swift Fundamental uh, book. So we're going to cover in this uh, lecture the introduction to the Swift and Playground. What we will cover in it, we will talk about a little bit of a history about the Swift language, some of its key features. We'll talk about uh, the basic syntax of Swift language. Uh, we will create a program called Hello World. It's not a program, but a small syntax, a small snippet of code. And then we will use the tool that we're going to use throughout this course to write our code and test it. All right. So that's unit one, lesson uh, one. Okay, 1.1. 1 .1. All right. So I'm going to go to the PowerPoints here or the keynotes. And let's talk about get started, all right? So a little bit of a history. Uh, Swift was introduced in the WWDC in 2014 as a modern language, and it replaced uh, Objective-C. The Objective-C was a little bit uh, harder to learn. It has much steeper learning curve, and you had to manage all memory allocations and the allocations and all of that. So Apple came or came out, chose Swift as uh, the alternative language because it's easier to read, easier to learn, and easier to maintain applications written in Swift. All right. Some of the key features of uh, that makes the Swift as an important language is it's safe, it's fast, and it is expressive. Now we're going to talk about these in a, in a little bit. Uh, it is safe because it explicit object types. That means you can you have to specify when it's ambiguous. You have to specify the object types. Uh, some of the other thing that you, the compiler does, it actually try to determine what do you mean by uh, when you declare a variable. That means it's type inference. I mean I don't have to specify. Uh, what uh, is the variable type? And then we're going to talk about when we do the practical examples. <clears throat> there are optionals. This is a great way to handle variables that can have, they, that may have value or not. Uh, so this is another key feature uh, that uh, is really, really helpful to programmers. And Swift language has a great, great way to handle errors. And you know some of these things, again, you might not see it right away. But once we dive into the language, you'll see what we're talking about here. <clears throat> Swift is an open source. That means that anybody can add to it. Uh, it, it, it. You can improve it. There are support. It supports multiple platforms. And if you want to go to learn more about the Swift language, you can go to swift.org and then you will uh, have all the documentation related to the Swift language. Uh, the first program we're going to do is just simply says print hello world. There's two ways to do that. There's one way to do it using the terminal. You can open the terminal and then you type in Swift and press enter and then type in print hello, hello world and press return and then type quit and return and then you quit the terminal command. I'm not gonna show you how to do that, but if you want to show it, see it, you can do it yourself. Um, it is, uh, we have much better tool to, to learn the Swift language and I'm gonna show you that tool instead. We'll spend more time in that tool. And that tool is Xcode and in particular, Playgrounds in Xcode. Uh, Playground is an excellent, excellent tool to learn and test your code. Uh, and I'm going to show you how we do that in a minute, uh, how we run uh, the, how we create an Xcode uh, Playground, how we run the code, how we test our code, how we inspect the values of uh, particular variables, all of that. And here's the steps. So we're going to do open Xcode, choose a file, and choose the playground, select the, the OK, let's do that as, as a practice. Uh, we'll do this as a practice together, all right? So 
I am going to open Xcode in a minute and let's get started. Okay, so we are ready to get started with the Swift language. So this is the fun part. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to use Xcode as I've told you. I'm assuming by now you've downloaded Xcode and installed it in your machine. Uh, in the previous video, I showed you how to download Xcode and then the requirements to install it. So if you don't have it here, you can go to the launch pad and then you will find Xcode here. And I usually like to put it in my desk, uh, shortcut taskbar. So it is here. <clears throat> so when you click on X, when you start Xcode, you will get a menu. Here in this one, the options that you, you, you can, what, what kind of projects you can create. You can create a new Xcode project, clone an existing project, open a project or a file. The one that we will use mainly is this one, create, uh, when we start creating applications, apps, we will use this one mainly. But in addition, and then this one in this side of this panel, it shows you any recent project that you've been working on. So instead of doing using a project, what we're going to use, we're going to use a tool that allows us to learn the syntax uh, easily and not focus on the other components of the, uh, the IDE or the integrated environment. So if I click on file and then click on new, one of the options here is called playground. That's what we're going to use at the beginning. And then when you click on the playground, I have two screens, so I'm gonna drag it here. So when I click on the playground, you have options. On what do you want to, what do you, what playground you want it to create it for? So you have either iOS, Mac OS, TV OS. The topic of this course is going to be on iOS. So we will use iOS all the time for now. So we will create either a blank, uh, blank playground, or you have templates already available for you, then you can around, mess around with it once you become more familiar. So we're going to select blank, blank uh, playground, and I already have uh, one called playground, so I'm going to call that playground, uh, first playground, okay. And then you click on create. All right, so let's examine what this thing is all about. So what do you have here in this panel here? You have the structure of your, uh, uh, the structure of your uh, folder or your project. It's not a project anymore. Uh, we're not gonna use any of this for now. So we're gonna focus mainly on this part and then how we examine our program, how we examine uh, the code and how we run our program. So in here at the bottom, <clears throat> you can show the debug area by clicking on this. So now anything that you deal, any output that you, comes up out of this program will actually appear here at the bottom. In addition to that, you have this thing called run or play, execute the playground. There are two options to do that. If you click and hold, you will get uh, automatically run or manually run. Automatically run means that every time you type something, it runs for you. Or I can select what to run. So I'm gonna select manually run. So I have more control on what to run. So if you can see here, as you can go down, so we have, this is the UI kit. Uh, this is basically the, um, uh, the basics of all our user interfaces in Swift. So you need, this is the library that contains that information. So this is, you will see this in almost every class that you create or every, uh, uh, every class that you create or code. This is the first syntax of a Swift language. Basically you'll notice we have a keyword called var we have something called string. So this is a variable name. This is the value of that variable name that we're assigning to that string. You'll notice one thing, to, uh, we talked about inference type. You'll notice that this one did not require any declaration of the type of the variable we're using. 
So the inference is that I'm putting a string in it. So automatically it will know, the compiler will know that this variable name string is actually uh, a string type. I'm gonna define another one and I'm gonna define another one called, for example, uh, first name. And I'm gonna put my name here. And notice I don't have to put a syntax, uh, a semicolon here. So semicolons are optional here. You don't need to use them most of the time. We don't use semicolon unlike other languages, all right? So now I have two type of two variables, string and first name. Well, that's good. And what about if I want to run those only? So if I run those, there's nothing will show in here. There's nothing showing here, and you'll notice that it's it's still running, but there's no output. So because I did not print anything, but what I have, I have the uh, I can inspect each statement basically. So here I have the I to show me a quick look at that variable. So it says this variable contains hello playground, or I can click on this and show the result. And that would be what is stored in that variable. The same thing with this one. So if I click on this, it shows me what is the value stored. And then I can say, what is the result of that statement? You can hide it if you want, or you can keep it, it's up to you. But what if I want to show the result and I wanna show it on the, in this debug area or in this console? What you can do, you can say print, we will print, put a couple of print statement. Are you welcome to the school course, right? Now, if I run this, now notice these are already ran, so I don't need to run them. Now, if I run this, it will tell me here, welcome to the school course, right? So that is uh, the first output statement that we can produce using the print command. So the print command allow me to print something on the console. And that is the output of it. Again, you can do the same thing here. You can show the result, which what will appear on the console, or you can inspect it as well here. So what if I want to print um, hello Ali or first name or playground? What you can do, you can say simply print. And then the print is a very, um, it's a very uh, sophisticated function and flexible functions. You can print many things using just this simple print command. So you can say, welcome, uh, um, welcome to the course. Okay. And then you can put the name of the variable that you want to print. So this will allow me now, when I run this, it will print welcome to the course and the value that is stored in that variable, which is in this case, uh, Ali, all right? So if I run it again, you will see uh, at the bottom here, welcome Ali. That is the end of this lecture. It's only getting you used to the uh, playground, explain to you the features of the Swift programming language. And in the next topic, obviously, we're going to dive deeper and deeper into the programming language. And then we'll basically follow the book and go cover topic by topic. Now, what do you need to do on your side? You need to open, if you open the student lab, <coughs> And then if you go to getting started, and then you'll see that you have the introduction to the playground. So here is the introduction. This is that playground, same thing that you've done before. Uh, you can, so if I run this guy here, you'll see that it's already run. And this is what we got the output. Now you need to follow the instructions. So now print your own phrase of, uh, to the council, pick your favorite song, anything that you want to print, it's basically, to practice the print statement. And then you can use multiple line functions to write some of the lyrics to the song, all right? So that is your first lab. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward, not complex, but I, this is a key point to get started. Uh, I'm gonna stop here and I'll see you on the next lecture.